Relics of Our Divine Mother From the book The Mother Question and Answers of 1953 Continuation of last video of the topic Does the Divine Give Suffering or Sorrow? Page 386 Continuation Our Divine Mother says After a long silence Ah, I wanted to ask you a question we have said at the beginning, one is surrounded by what one thinks about. You understand quite well what that means, right? And then mother turns to a child. Every time you think of something, it is as though you have had a magnet in your hand and were attracting that thing towards yourself. You understand? Now, there are people who have a very, very bad habit of always thinking about all possible catastrophes and are in a sort of constant apprehension about some calamity befalling them the next moment. I know many like that. There are some here and so those people have as though a magnet in their hands to attract calamities not only upon themselves but upon others too. That lays a big responsibility upon them. And if one can't stop all the time from thinking about something, some have have a head that runs on and they haven't found a way of stopping it. Well, why not make it run on the right lines instead of letting it run on the others? Once your head begins to run, let it run on all the good things that can happen. If it is obliged to turn around and round, well, turn then to the good side. That is, if somebody is ill, instead of saying what is going to happen, perhaps this is going to be very serious. And if it is that disease and the calamity comes so quickly, instead of all that, if one thinks, oh, that is nothing, illnesses are outer illusions, translating some deeper vibrations which are not seen. That is why one doesn't speak about them, but that's how it is. And these deeper vibrations may come and set in order what has been disturbed. And this imbalance, this illness or bad thing that has come, well, it will be absorbed by the grace and will disappear. No trace of it will remain except that of things agreeable and pleasant. And then our Divine Mother says, One may continue to think in this way uninterruptedly. People always need to make their mind run, 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 but then make it run on the right lines. You will see that it has an effect. For instance, let it go like this, that I shall learn better and better, shall know better and better, becomes happier, healthier, and all the difficulties will vanish. And wicked people will become sweet and good and ill people will be cured. And houses which should be built will be built and those things which should disappear will disappear but giving place to better things and the world will move in a constant progress and at the end of that progress there will be a total harmony and so on. Continue thus. You can go on endlessly but then... You will have around you, around your head, all kinds of petty things, all kinds of pretty things. Those who perceive the atmosphere sir, see certain inky stains like an octopus there, yes, like that, with its tentacles to try and upset your mind. Instead of that, one will see happy formations, formations of light, rays of sunlight or perhaps beautiful pictures and all that. One will see beautiful things. There are painters who do that and they always catch thoughts. And then one child says, Sweet mother, you have said each meditation ought to be a new revelation for in each meditation something new happens. After the meditation, is one conscious of what has happened? For this our Divine Mother says, But that's exactly the thing, I say. Pay attention and become conscious. If one is very attentive, one becomes conscious. One must be very concentrated and very attentive. 
then one becomes conscious now from page 394 question by a child sweet mother in everybody is the psychic always pure or has it be has it to be made pure for this our divine mother says it is always pure but it is either more or less individualized and independent in its action what is psychic in the being is always pure but its very definition but by its very definition for it is that part of the being which is in contact with the divine and expresses the truth of the being but this may be like a spark in the darkness of the being or it may be a being of light conscious fully formed and independent these are all the gradations between the two and then the child says mother sweet mother usually is it real for this a divine mother says it is the outer consciousness that is not in contact with it for it is turned towards instead of being turning to being turned inwards for it lives amidst all the external noises and movements in what it sees what it does what it says instead of looking within into the depths of the being and listening to the inner inspirations for this the child says sweet mother has the psychic any power for this a divine mother says par it is usually the psychic which guides the being one knows nothing about it because one is not conscious of it but usually it is that which guides the being if one is very attentive one becomes aware of it but the majority of men haven't the least idea of it for instance when they have decided in their outer ignorance to do something and instead of being able to do it at all all the circumstances are so organized that they they, they do something else and they start shouting storming flying with a rage against fate saying that depends on what they believe their beliefs that nature is wicked or their destiny bearful or god is unjust or no matter what it depends on what they believe while most of the time it is just the very circumstance which was most favorable for the inner development and naturally if you ask the psychic to help you uh, to fashion a pleasant life for yourself to earn money have children who will be the pride of the family etc etc well the psychic will not help you but it will create for you all the circumstances necessary to awaken something in you so that the need of union with the divine may be born in your consciousness at times you have made fine plans and if they have succeeded you would have been more and more encrusted in your outer ignorance your stupid little ambition your aimless activity whilst if you receive a good shock and the post you coveted is denied to you the plan you made is shattered and you find yourself completely thwarted and then sometimes this opposition opens to you a door on something truer and deeper and when you are a little awake and look back if you are in the least sincere you say ah it wasn't i who was right it was nature or the divine grace or my psychic being who did that it is the psychic being which organized that for this the child says sweet mother is it the psychic will which wants the being to be identified with the divine for this our divine mother says yes surely it is the will of the psychic it is also the very reason of its existence it is for that it is there for example in the mind certain activities even at times in the physical and vital certain activities awaken to the influence of the psychic without even knowing it that is why those parts adhere to it and begin to aspire also for the divine knowledge the divine union the relation with the divine and then the child says sweet mother how does the psychic manifest the truth mother says i have said that it manifests the truth the child says we give the name psychic to the psychological center of a being of our being the seat within of the highest truth of our existence that which can know and manifest this truth according to science of living on education for this our divine mother says oh the truth of our existence not just the truth the truth of the being that is the central reason d'etre of an existence it is that 
indeed, which organizes circumstances so that the truth of the being may be expressed or the superficial outer being may be led to turn round within, not find any support outside, for instance, and to turn within to have a support. It finds the psychic support. And then is the passage. The body has a wonderful capacity of adaptation and endurance. It is fit to do so many other things than usual, if, than usually one can imagine. If instead of the ignorant and despotic masters that govern it, it is the rule by the central truth of the being, one will be surprised of what it is capable of. Calm, quiet, strength, strong and poised, it will be at every minute put forth the effort that it is demanded for. Will it learn to find rest in action to recuperate through contact with the universal forces, the energies it spends consciously and usefully, IBID. And then the child has a question on that. How can one have rest in action? For this, our Divine Mother says, that comes from a kind of certitude of inner choice. When one aspires for something, if at the same time one knows that the aspiration will be heard and answered in the best way possible, that establishes a quietitude in the being, a quietitude in the vibrations. While if there is any doubt and uncertainty, if one does not know what will lead one to the goal, or if ever one will reach it, or whether there is a way of doing so and so, then one gets disturbed and usually creates a sort of little real wind around the being which prevents it from receiving the real thing. Instead, if one has a quiet faith, if while if one is aspiring that there is one knows that that there is no aspiration, naturally sincere aspiration, which remains unanswered, then one is quiet. One aspires with as much as fervor as possible, but does not stand in nervous agitation, asking oneself why one does not get immediately what one has asked for. One knows how to wait, I have said somewhere. To know how to wait is to put time on one side. That's quite true. For if one gets excited, one loses all one's time. One loses one's time, loses energy, loses one's moments. To be very quiet, calm, peaceful, with the faith that what is true will take place and that if one lets it happen, it will happen so much the quicker. Then in that peace, everything goes much better. These are the divine words of our Divine Mother.